Hi, it's Jeff Chalmers here from discoverdoublebase.com, which is the home of online courses, lessons and interviews, all designed to help you learn the double bass. And I'm joined today by one of our faculty, one of our jazz experts, somebody who is a wonderful player. He's known for his work with uh, the WDR Big Band, with Jamie Aversold, he was a columnist for Bass Player Magazine for over 25 years, I think. Um, and he is the author of The Jazz Bass Book, which is essential reading for any serious student of the double bass. So let's welcome John Goldsby. John, fantastic to have you here. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. Nice to be here. Well, it's just brilliant to have you back for a second time. We've been filming uh, this week, covering a wide range of lessons on jazz bass. And we reached out to the audience to ask for questions. And I had a question from Antonio, who was basically wanting to know your approach to improvising over jazz standards and, and kind of what you're thinking about in terms of memorizing them. I'd really like to hear how you approach learning a jazz standard, John. Well, when I'm learning tunes, uh, I think there, there are two approaches. One, you have to understand the tune intellectually, but you really have to hear it. You have to be able to retain uh, the music in your ear. So a lot of times I'll, I'll, I'll listen to a recording if I can find yeah, classic recordings of a standard. If I don't have a recording, maybe somebody sends me sheet music and I have to just analyze the tune as I go along, then it's a more intellectual process. But I, I think it's very important to hear the tune. Uh, there's that old saying, if you can sing it, you can play it. If you can hear it, you can sing it, and then you can play it. So is this the melody and the harmony? Is this the whole thing? It's the whole package. So uh, on standard jazz tunes, usually they have a singable melody. Uh, a lot of these uh, Broadway show tunes have melodies that were originally sung on a, on a, in a show with lyrics. Um, you know, I'm thinking of like a standard, uh, you'd be so nice to come home to. It's a beautiful tune. Yeah, great tune. Uh, I think the first recording I heard of that tune was a jazz recording, a Jim Hall record from the 70s with Ron Carter on bass, Steve Gadd on drums. Uh, then do you know this uh, recording with Red Mitchell and Lee Konitz, just duo? Yeah, the I Concentrate On You album. Uh, oh, that's was, uh, yeah. fantastic. It's, it, that, that is absolutely essential listening for, uh, for anybody who's into jazz bass, isn't it? It's really a wonderful thing. And of course, Jim Hall is such a, the guitar player is such a rich source of, of records that heavily feature the bass player. He uh, did an album called Some of My Best Friends Are Bass Players. Right. And it has Scott Coley, Christian McBride. It has, well, all manner of incredible bassists. So yeah, it's wonderful material. Right. So if you take a tune like that, you can analyze it theoretically. It's a 32-bar tune. Uh, it's not a typical A-A-B-A -A -A form. Uh, I'd say the form is A-B-A-C. So the, there, there are two A sections, which are eight bars long, and then there's a B section, that, you know, A-B, then there's A, then there's the last section, the C section. So if I just think of the melody to that song. Yeah. Uh, so to me, that, that's a very singable melody, and that's the first eight bars. It's easy to remember, actually. So if I know the tune starts in, in G minor, so that's the first eight bars of the tune. And I often do that. I'll, I'll, I'll play the melody, then play the root movement of the bass line. I'm not worried so much about, well, I'm a little worried about whether the chords are major, minor, or dominant, but the main thing is to get the melody up top and the root movement in my ear. And once I have that, then the harmony in between seems to fill itself in. Um, and are you thinking in terms of uh, the natural number system? Are you kind of thinking, uh, you know, one, two, you know, different chord numbers, or are you thinking about, you know, G minor down to C minor, how, how, or is it a bit of both? Well, that tune starts in G minor, it ends up in B flat major. So I know, okay, the whole tune sort of revolves around this G minor, B flat uh, sound. And the important thing is to find the landmarks where it comes to rest. Uh, at the end of the first 
eight bars, it, it rests on an E flat major. Mm -hmm. So it starts in G minor, turns around in G minor, then it does a two, five, one, an E flat major. So now I'm thinking theoretically, but if I'm... To me, that's very clear as a two, five, one, an E flat major. Uh, the B section of the tune, the, so the second eight bars uh, starts a two, five, one, and G minor. Uh, the last four bars of the B section, E half diminished, A7, A half diminished, D7, and then we're back to the second half of the tune. Yeah. So I'm constantly thinking of things theoretically, but I really want to have them in my ear. I see a lot of students who They'll, they'll need to learn a standard, they want to learn a standard, they get the chart to you'd be so nice to come home to, put the chart, the first thing they do is put the chart up on the music stand, and then they keep playing through the chart and thinking, I can't memorize this, I, can, I can't memorize this, and they're trying, almost like they're trying to memorize a mixed up alphabet or something. Mm -hmm. if, they, if you would just listen to some recordings of the tune, get the melody in your ear, then it's much easier uh, to add the harmony and retain the tune. Uh, so it's really just four eight bar sections and they're all pretty simple. Once you, you know, work your way through those four sections, you have the tune in your ear and it's there forever, hopefully. So do you try to close up the fake book with your students then, to try to close the real book, the, uh, you know, to stop people looking at the changes? I find that I get ad addicted, if I'm at a jam session, to keep my eye on, on the page, even for tunes that I might know or that are fairly simple and, you sure. know. Sure. And I, I think that sort of uh, throws a wrench in the jazz tradition uh, <laughs> works. Yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of jazz players back in the day, they just learned tunes on the bandstand or somebody played the tune for them or showed them the tune. Uh, I, I think uh, if you get stuck on the page, then you're always going to be stuck on the page and it's sometimes, sometimes you have to flip it over. I remember I did a student jam session and we were ha having a hard time uh, finding a tune to play. And uh, the bass player said, well, I, I know, so what? Maybe we could play that. I said, oh, that's a great tune. And so everybody got out their phones and started looking up, so what? I said, uh, wait, it's only 16 bars of D minor, then eight bars of E flat minor, and eight bars of D minor. Oh, no, but I need to look at that. I said, no, it's just listen. You know, yeah. it, count to eight count to eight again and then go up to e flat minor you know it's uh and if in doubt look at the piano player's hands as i move, exactly, as I move on right. to the black notes so it's those kind of situations where you have to challenge yourself to use your ear because that's what jazz is all about jazz is not about interpreting what somebody's written out on a page it's about listening and reacting to a living breathing version of a, a, a tune that's a great thing and it's wonderful to hear all of these tunes you know um you'd be so nice to come home to it's it's one that i haven't heard for years and you just played it and think, oh fantastic and we're chatting about the different recordings and stuff and hopefully there'll be many more people out there playing these tunes that we can uh, hear their interpretations of so john thank you so much for joining me today john's been here this week in the uk filming a series of lessons and uh uh, it's really inspiring stuff. So I think we're going to finish off by cutting to a little bit of a performance so you can hear him play. And if you want to learn more about John, please go and check out his courses over at Discoverable Bass. And lastly, if you're a fan of jazz bass, let me also, we've got a visual cue here. Check out his book, which is available on uh, Backbeat Records. Backbeat, um, what is it? Who's it published by, John? Uh, Backbeat it's Books. It's Hal Leonard, so Hal Leonard. you can buy it anywhere, Amazon. Yeah, or, yeah. You know. yeah, but you'll enjoy it anyway. It's a superb work. And... Uh, yeah, let's cut to John. We're going to hear him play something, uh, something beautiful in this wonderful space right now. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.